Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Shop. You are listening to episode, well, season six, episode five. And I am here with Sasha. Hi, Sasha. And uh, this season, we have been following along with Sasha's journey as she's gotten back into wholesale. If you haven't listened to the previous episodes, I would suggest that you listen to them first because they kind of do go in sequence. And last week, we went to Brighton to do some cold calling, which was great and then lots of fun. And... This week, we're going to be talking about how it's going. We're going to set some goals and get some overall kind of tips and uh, talk about the whole experience of working together and um, what Sasha is hoping to achieve. Uh, If you have liked this season, it would be great if you would head over to Instagram and share where you're tuning in. That always helps others discover the podcast too since we are also recording it and publishing it on youtube if you are watching on youtube love for you to like this video and subscribe if you want to see more content like this and also comment below so far we have not had a comment maybe i should have done a competition for the first comment is it cheating if we comment on our own thing is that really embarrassing like liking your status on facebook well, I have liked the videos from my other face uh, uh, YouTube account. So I'm liking it with my actual YouTube account. <laughs> <laughs> I've done both, I think, to be fair. Also got my husband to do it. <laughs> um but if anyone listening that is not me or Sasha or my husband could make a comment, that would be great. <laughs> um I will uh be inter- inter- eternally grateful um and also i think what i'm going to do in terms of your catalog we talked about this before in one of the episodes to show the previous one versus now i'm going to do that as an instagram graphic i think so we'll share it over there uh, so look out for that as well but hello sasha welcome back for once we're not in person I know it's weird. It feels like we've got so intimate over the last like few. <laughs> it feels a bit strange, like seeing you on my computer screen. Spoken more to you than I have with like yeah. most people. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. how did you find last week going to Brighton? Um, it was really good fun actually. I was, to be honest, I was very nervous, and I think when we started, I was a bit like, ooh. I think over time I kind of got my rhythm back and what I found that was interesting is this week when I've had to follow up some leads and like pick up the phone and stuff I don't feel as apprehensive as I did before around just like picking up the phone and it's almost just like instead of it being this thing that I'm like feeling quite cringy like oh god I don't want to have to talk to them it's just like oh it's on my list just pick up like message contact it's becoming a lot more habitual do you think that's because you went to visit shops or do you think that's because you've been doing it for a while now? I think it's both. I think one, mainly because we've been doing it for a while, but I think what I did get that was beneficial from visiting the shops was um, it reminded me not to take it so personally because it kind of mm-hmm. like just were, kind of got into my head like all the different factors that a shop's dealing with, you know, just from some of the chats that we had. Like they're just really busy. It doesn't mean they hate you. It doesn't mean your cards are shit. It just means they've got. 50 other things going on so I think that extra like dimension helped my brain like just think about it a bit better I mean out of the shops we went to actually not that many shop owners were there even yeah um and actually in the follow-up what one of the challenges has been like trying to locate the decision maker and get Mm. in front of them in some way but I think it's a weird one isn't it because you never know how it's going to go till you go so we kind of said as well that there would be benefit just generally if anybody's like selling to keep like a sample pack with you at all times, whatever that looks mm-hmm. like for you, because you will like bumble into places as opposed to then always having to go somewhere with the intention. It's almost cheaper if like you've always got a stock ready and you're just naturally. Yeah, I know a lot of people like quite a few clients of mine that went, you know, to Cornwall over the summer or whatever and went in call calling while they were like shopping with their family. Yeah. And, you know, not necessarily to sell right there and then, but just like, oh, that you have a lovely shop. Who's the owner? 
I would love to contact them when I'm back from holiday. Yeah, and I think once you've had a warm person to person interaction, they're going to be a bit nicer to you afterwards, purely because they've remembered that you're a human being. So like you're less likely to get dismissed as quickly, like they're more likely to have a bit of a chat with you, whether it's a yes or a no, it builds like connection, I think. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, just seeing people face to face, I think that's why trade shows are not dead. Because people still want to meet in person. They still want to have that human interaction where we're face to face. Um, I think the pandemic actually has highlighted that. In one way, lots of things have become more virtual during the pandemic, right? But also, equally, there's been a lot of things that has become where we value the face to face interaction more. So yeah. it's like a two, like it's almost contradictory what has happened. I suppose. Yeah, I see what you mean in the way that we kind of we want distance in some places, but it's kind of created a need for more like human intimacy and like other. Yeah. Yeah, like we almost like we realize we can save a lot of time by doing meetings via Zoom, for example. Yeah. But that obviously leads to more face time with our family or our friends or that sort of thing. So yeah. So now when you are back, you've done that, you know what you're doing in terms of your wholesale. How do you organize yourself? Because that's something we talked about in the beginning a lot, you know, how you scheduled your working week and how you make time for sales. And I often get clients or new clients that tell me, well, I haven't had time to do that. And like selling is obviously one of the most important things you can do for your business. Uh, so what? how do you organize your week now? Uh, so I've definitely struggled with it. I think you know, as people listened to earlier episodes of the podcast, I was very like, come in and hot. I'm just going to like spend loads of time selling. And then lo and behold, like every, like I've been so busy recently that it's a bit like, uh. so what I've done that I found really helpful. So you set this up for me or we did it together. It was one of your templates is the Trello board. So because I've yeah. got an amazing Trello system, every time I contact a new shop, I put like the Instagram handle in one place. And then I put like, a, a little card where I, of them on Trello where I know a bit about them and then what's really helped is I have different columns for where they are in the process but the thing that's been game changing for me is I'll just put diary reminders in Trello to know like when I'm going to contact them next so what I do now is once a week or twice a week I'll have like a wholesale few hours so I'll be honest it's been more once a week but as long as I do it weekly I'm able to get enough done so I can go into mm-hmm. the thing and I can see who I'm supposed to contact that week. I'll get them done first because that's the priority is to keep the existing lead warm. And then if I've got time, I will contact some new shops, add them onto the board, um, make a note to say I've DM'd them at this date and then put in a new schedule to say this time next week, get in touch with them again. So literally mm-hmm. all I do now is I go on Trello when it's wholesale time and look at my little clock things to figure out who I need to contact and when. And have you used a system like that before for anything else? Or have you tried to use it? Because I, for example, have tried using Asana and Trello and Monday and all of them at one stage to organize my business. But actually, it doesn't work for every aspect of my life. Like, um, I find that I need pen and paper for my day to day, like, you know, my to do list. I can't do that in Trello. But when it comes to reaching out to people and organize things, something like Trello works well. Yeah, I'm the same. Um, Trello, I've never done anything like this before. Trello really works for me in terms of the wholesale system. It's just, it's been amazing. But I'm awful at, like, I still don't have a good system for my business in that sense. It's kind of, I use a little bit of, um, what is it called? It's not even Asana, I've got it up. It's um, Notion. Mm -hmm. Um, I use a little bit of that to put like big picture stuff in, like a big mind dump of like the big things I want to do in my business. And then just so I don't forget really. And then I'll decant from there. What, like when I have time to be like big project, put it on my to-do list. But I'm like a pen and paper girl. But I found that yeah. having Trello for wholesale, it's just all of the things that I would be holding in my head to remember are like decanted into a space that I only have to use for wholesale time. Yeah, and then it's very dedicated. You don't get distracted by the things when you go on to that board. 
like I do have one board for long term things you know we all have a li long list of to do li things for our businesses that we wish we could do better and that we want to change in the future that list I keep in Trello like my like one day I'm going to get to this sort of kind of list. That's exactly what my notion list is. It's just a board of like one day so I don't forget this is what I'll be working on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so how many stockers do you have now? Okay. So we've got two in America. We've got one in Estonia. I've got cruise cards in Brighton. We've got South Sea Rock, which we love. We've got there's more. Um, there's somebody who's basically said they're about to order, so they're just about to press go. Um, so I would say we've got six like definite stockists at the moment, but mm -hmm. I would say I've got a board. Hang on, let me look. So I would say in terms of like warm leads. Like, these are mm -hmm. people who have said, like, we are very interested. We probably will place an order, but can you come back to us either in December or January? So yeah. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of those. So even if only half of them ordered... That would take me to ten. That would still get you to that first goal of ten. Yeah, exactly, which is definitely what we were working towards. And it might not sound like a lot, but, like, it feels like a lot from where we were. But even what's kind of almost better about it is, like, yeah, there's these 10 that might happen, but because we've got a system now, there's, like, um a constant stream of shop. Oh, my God, let me not make that gesture again. There's, like, a constant... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if anyone's watching this on audio, my hand gestures to try and show a constant stream, so it's really rude. Um, but there's an influx of like new leads coming in. I'm gonna just sit on my hands for a little bit. <laughs> I talk with my hands too, but I tend to do it below the camera. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. So you can't see it so much, apart from her doing jazz hands, which is frequent. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, that's really, really good. How are you feeling about that? Are you happy with that? What does it feel like? I feel a lot more in control and I feel optimistic would probably be the word. Do I feel ecstatic that I've got thousands of shops? No, because I haven't. But has it happened overnight? No. But do I feel optimistic and confident that if I carry on the process that I could get to 50 stockists and it wouldn't be the most insane thing in the world? 100%. Yeah. And do you think that's going to be the goal for the next sort of six months? I mean, I'd like to say a year, but you would like to say six months. So I think we can go for six months and then we can see where we get to. But of course, like if I could get to 50 stockists full stop ever, like that would be phenomenal for my business. Yeah, I think I think you can do it. I think that by the time you started contacting shops, this because of, you know, when we started and like, naturally it was a little bit late for yeah. them to take on new people because really cards is something that is quite I suppose it's quite low risk for them to buy so it's not that hard so they probably do that quite quickly whereas you know something brand new that they're going to have to invest money in they might sit on for a bit longer whereas when they go to trade shows or if their card agents come in and stuff it's quite quick to decide because the risk is minimal. So um, I guess also on that, what has been my experience is like, I've also in this process, like we say, we've got 10 yeses. I've got, I would say 10 definite no's as in I've got 10 people that I've moved to my category to say, it's not a case that they want to talk to me later. It's just a, you're not the right fit for us, which weirdly I found helpful too, because like, I'm eventually going to speak to every shop I imagine in existence in the UK maybe if I keep contacting at the rate like at a fast rate so it's kind of helpful as well to just know like okay the answer for these guys is no I don't think you're going to feel, speak to every shop yeah I probably am not at all am I, I <laughs> like that's like rubbish <laughs> I mean like I spent 11 months working full-time uh, for a new stationery brand before I decided what well, back then I basically working from home was I was working all the time it didn't suit me I moved back to working in an office after that so I changed job again but you know for those 11 months my whole thing was new business development and I probably contacted 2,000 shops Jesus 
But like, that's not all of them. That's insane. Okay, let me take all of that back. I think the point <laughs> was more just like, just having them know weirdly felt affirming because it was like, this shop is done. It's either yes or no. And that's all you need from every shop is to be able to put it in one of the two buckets. So it was yeah. kind of helpful to know that one's done, I can move on. Yeah, I think that's really good. And I, I think learning to appreciate the no's that they've taken the time to say no and being thankful for that it's saving it's, me time of like continually chasing something that's just not going to happen exactly it saves everyone time and everyone's stress it is actually a really kind yeah. thing to do yeah i would agree and i would say like anyone of us that are running businesses actually you know, I believe in karma. So if people try to sell you things, please respond and say no. I know I'm not always, I, I mean, I should do what I preach, right? But uh, sometimes they do end up in my inbox for a while. But, you know, if someone has taken the time to clearly learn your name and stuff, yeah, I rather think- than just copied and pasted, and then, like, just say no, thank you. Yeah, no, I definitely do appreciate that more. Like, obviously, we all get emails. I get those spammy ones saying they're going to, like, you know, increase my business by 10x and they don't even... Uh, yeah, I don't reply to the spammy yeah. ones, but the <laughs> ones that start with, hello, Therese, uh, have you thought about this? Yeah. This is what we do, whatever. I, I'm trying to make one up now. I can't remember what I last got. But um, and I do appreciate I, that's not me judging any buyers that are listening because, you know, I appreciate if you are a buyer and you're a shop owner, you can't reply to everyone, and not everyone is that appreciative of a no either. So I know that it backfires sometimes, but um, yeah, it's generally not personal. Yeah, I've learned that throughout this process. It's not the so same. what. What would you say your overall experience has been? Because you were so against trying to wholesale again. Okay, so we've had like a fair few orders in this time. We've had quite a few. We've had a couple of like reorders and I've built a lot of leads. So I think I've done and seen enough to think, okay, there could be something here. I think I'm still, it hasn't changed my life, but I'd be interested to see that if I sticked with the system, I continually showed up and contacted new stop shops and consistently did that for X period a week for the next six months, then I would just be very interested to see what the result would be. So yeah. I would say like, it's made me kind of think, oh, there might be something here, but I'm also not naive to the fact that I won't know for sure unless I do the work. And that's kind of the irritating thing a little bit. I'd much rather it was a little bit more instant gratification because it's not, but it's very much like building and building and building. And if you build it to a point, you're great. I've seen, um, there's another shop I like, a uh, card from Piano Cordier. Is it Jeff and Squirrel? I can't remember. I'm sorry if I got it wrong. Um, and she posted recently that she's got 50 stockists. And I found that really like inspiring and really motivating because I'm like, if it's happening for other people, then it can happen for me. And it's just that thing of you've just got to keep going. Well, I'm going to be live tomorrow with one of my clients tomorrow. So that will be on replay by the time this episode gets out. And she has grown to over 200 stockists this year. She does cards. See? And I appreciate our cards will be very different. But my point is, it's like... I mean, you basically complete opposite from each other. (laughs) We pull opposite. But... Um, that I love hearing stuff like that because it's kind of yeah so what I guess my experience with it has been so far that I know there is some real potential there but it's just the thing of like you have to continue and put the graft in to get to the other that's kind of how I feel about it yeah you do but it's a little bit like buses tour you know like you have to set the foundation it might be coming slowly fast but like you know then they like there's nothing 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 and then they all come at once well exactly and do you know what? I have seen that happen to other people and also like I can't pretend that we haven't had momentum through just like through me being in one shop then then somebody saw that I was in that shop and then they contacted us or do you know what I mean like even just the act of your first view it does kind of build momentum doesn't it yeah yeah well for me I've seen a big change in you how you treat your sales overall which has been really fun to see like it's not, yes, we've been working away on the wholesale, but, 
you know, you have been selling actively, you've been like, think, you know, even getting your Instagram audience to like get involved in your targets and stuff. It's been fun to see that you are now thinking a little bit more like, how can I get sales other than ads? You completely changed my entire perspective of that genuinely through this process when you kind of said to me, like, what are you doing to get sales? And you weren't just talking about wholesale, you meant about my entire business. That really switched something in my brain. And like, I don't know if anyone does follow me on Instagram. Hopefully, you live, well, hopefully you won't have noticed it'll be subtle. But I've definitely been a lot more focused on like shouting about the great things we do. And um, I've noticed a massive difference in our organic sales. So today, for instance, um, we got our 60,000, wait, hang on, 60,000 order, which was like huge. And so I posted on it when we were at like 59,999. And I was like, the next 60,000, like, we'll refund the order. Like, with, as long as you don't take the piss, like, we'll refund it to say like, thank you. And it's things like that, that I wouldn't have thought to do until we started working together. And I did that. And within like half an hour, we got 15 orders. And it's like, oh, wow. Wow. awesome it's because people like you know they enjoy it and it's fun and I'm having fun selling and like they like the products are good like it's fun and I realized that it completely changed my focus to thinking like when you're selling you're irritating people or you're just being too me 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 to but actually it can be really fun for everyone and you have definitely taken the more service side approach of helping people with you when you're selling on Instagram you know how you say to people dm me an occasion or what who you want to buy a card for and a little bit about them and i can make suggestions and stuff it's not all about like you're not forcing pushing things down people's throat you're finding those problems they have and figuring out how you can solve them yeah exactly and you know what it hasn't you know how you always say you can sell and be introverted it's been that same thing like i've been able to do it in a way that feels fun and true and authentic as opposed to feeling like thick and pushy and like I'm selling blind do you know what I mean it doesn't mm. I think it's just been funny if fun and I think that following along like on that kind of process has been fun for me I I really enjoy the fact that normally when I work with most of the time when I work one-to-one -one with clients we have calls like once a month but I am thinking already like what can I offer where it is weekly check-ins because I Yes, you do not have to talk for an hour every week. But I think that that accountability, if someone, is, depending on the personality of that person, the accountability of having a call every week it is pretty good, I think. If we hadn't have had weekly calls, I wouldn't have done anything. And I know there are people out there who would have just gotten with it, but I know, and you probably know, <laughs> Teresa's like, yes, Asha, I know. I didn't say it. Your face said it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's completely true. I wouldn't have done anything. I would. I found it really helpful that it was quite intensive because we got all the foundation stuff sorted. Mm -hmm. And I don't actually think that we've necessarily got the foundation stuff sorted quicker than when I work monthly with someone. I just think that the other bits, you know, where you're selling and you're setting targets and you are reviewing your sales and stuff, that bit might not have fallen into yeah. place had we not had weekly calls. I was continually getting the same messaging from you week after week about like you're in control of your own sales. You're like, and if you'd have told me that month and um, month, I'd have too much time in between the calls to not take it seriously, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I, I am thinking about what I'm going to offer um, next year where it is a bit more intensive. Um, so watch this space, I suppose. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see when you do do that, like how your clients find it and what the different like experiences yeah. compared to the two. Yeah, and it's definitely something I learned in this process, I think, which is nice. I'm You're really always learning. I feel a little bit sad that we're coming to the end. I know I feel a little bit sad but I mean we'll still obviously talk so that's not <laughs> the thing but like I'm a little bit sad that the season is going to be over so the way we've decided to do it is these are the five episodes we're recording and kind of following along the journey because really now it's all about Sasha taking what she's learned and implementing it and keeping up with it and then we're going to do a um Follow on 
recording maybe in six months or so and check in with Sasha where she's at then and um we also thought which we mentioned I think in episode one that if you guys had questions for Sasha or me about the whole process then we thought we might do an Instagram live to answer those questions and if you have questions you can dm either one of us or you can if you're watching on youtube you can put it in the comments please put it in the comments actually even if you like listening on apple Podcasts, can you just go to youtube and put it in the comments that would be great thank you <laughs> <laughs> um but yes uh, do you think there's something else that you want to share any tips or anything that you think we haven't covered um, I think we've covered a lot, but I guess I could share something that happened today. So, yep. uh, <laughs> so uh, today I had quite uh, a couple of like, I, I don't want to use the word negative experiences, but maybe that's fair to you say, and just be like, do you know what, it's part of the process. So um, today was a day where I was doing follow up. So I was going on my Trello and I was seeing who I needed to contact. And today was more of a day of chasing up like existing leads than it was new leads. And I think I'd made three calls back to back and I got three no's back to back and it's just part of it. So one lady was like, thank you so much for the samples. Absolutely not. And I was like, okay, kind of wish that if you already knew, no, that you hadn't have gone for the samples, but fair enough, completely understand. Fine. Really appreciate you telling me. She was lovely. Fine. Second person, I called them up and I was like, Sasha from Cheeky Zebra. And I heard the guy say to the woman, <laughs> what did he say? don't really know who that is <laughs> I was like fantastic and then I got on the phone with him and he was just kind of like you've not heard from me it means I did see it but I didn't like it um if I liked it I would have contacted you I'm very busy and basically hung up which again fine and then I got a third one who was really lovely really nice card shop and basically said like we like you and they explained all the complicated issues and they were like don't not talk to us again but it's not for right now which is again really fine but I guess I'm sharing it to say like that's part of it and the week before had an amazing week you know got a new order um got loads of potential warm leads but it is just and but today I felt a little bit like oh I don't want to do this like this is hard <laughs> but you just gotta like but over I'm getting more and more desensitized to it because if you take out your feelings and make it very objective it gets easier but I just kind of wanted to share that you know today was a pretty crappy wholesale session yeah and like even remembering that actually you saved a lot of time by getting those no's yeah and like kind of being grateful for that instead of you know being like deflated by that you know three no's means that you're closer to another week like last week where you might get yeses yeah and so just it's almost just like making sure that you just keep picking yourself up like I had to have a little shake danced about a bit and then I was like <laughs> yeah come on we'll get straight afterwards got my three no's contacted a new shop and that's just how it is yeah and then it's almost like I think I used to do horseback riding when I was little. Right. Or, or, you know, quite, I mean, even till I was a young adult. But um, one thing they always said was like, you know, if you fall off, you have to get straight back up. Like, unless you're really injured. <laughs> <laughs> but like, in general, like, you know, if you fall down and you're not, like, you're a bit shocked, you, they put you back on the horse. Do you know what? That's such a good, like, yeah, that's such a great analogy. But that is exactly what it's like. You have to just, they say that with driving as well, don't they? If you like had a, you just get back in the car. Yeah, but you almost have to do it right away before it becomes like a big thing. And you have overanalyzed it in your mind because we do that, don't we? We don't make it easy for ourselves. No. That that would be nice, but it doesn't happen. My mind is not my friend. I definitely, you know this, like I'm very good at like the negative self-talk. So my mind is like, Bleh. so yeah. yeah, whatever you can do to get there quickly before it properly yells at you. That's great. <laughs> yes. Anything else that you would like to share before we go today? No, I think that's everything. I've had a really enjoyable experience. Like, honestly, your help has been, like, I'm not just saying this because she's in front of me. I genuinely have found <laughs> working with Therese, like, invaluable. Um, And I know that you have, like, 
I don't know how you help people but if you are kind of like me and you need help um I just think that I you probably could figure it out yourself but it would just take you a lot longer and there'll be bits that you might miss um and for me at least I found going with working with you from straight away has just kind of saved me a lot of time um and I've just found it really really helpful also I don't think like I expected because it's not even just like the processes and systems that we got set up and the catalog and the all of that stuff it's also you're just kind of a wealth of knowledge like you've got contacts or like you'll say little things to me that will stick in my head like you told me you kind of got me more focused on selling in my business full stop like it's all these kind of small incremental value bits that I wouldn't have thought I would have got out of this process before we went in. Does that make sense? Mm. Um, so it was just, and I think that was quite eye-opening for me. Just like, how, I'm surprised at how much I've gained from it. Not not outside of what I expected, if that makes sense. That's nice. I think that my challenge is always like, you know, I am quite niche when I sell myself I suppose Mm -hmm. like when I talk about what I do and stuff but you know sales and marketing sit so close together they go hand in hand they you can't have sales without some form of marketing and vice versa so there's so many things that ties into your sales like you know I as the sale like you know when I'm in a sales team and I had up a sales team I would have meetings with everyone from the product team to you know the FD or something like that because like it all ties together um really like sales is what ties all those things together you don't have any of those other teams even if you're a one woman team without those things without your sales so it is a lot broader than I sometimes make out it to be but that's because I also don't want to lose focus on the sales bit yeah, no, that does make sense. But I think it was definitely, yeah, it was eye-opening to me just how much extra I got out of the experience. I mean, you only have to have been following me on Instagram for like the last few months and see the difference in like how I show up in a more fun, salesy way than I did before to kind of see like how it trickled down in ways I didn't expect. Yeah. Have you also noticed how other people are selling more now? Uh, yes. Do you mean like how I've just noticed other people do it? Or- yeah. Yeah, 100%. It's almost like I'm tuned in to like being more aware of it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that once you like start to thinking about it, you actually see that, oh, that person is actually trying to sell something. But and then you think about like, how do I feel about it? And you you generally, you feel good about it. I I mean, I want to be sold to. Yeah. Not push down my throat, but I want to be sold to. Yeah, uh, there was somebody push it, sell, showing their notebooks and I was like, I love these notebooks. And because I'm in a sales brain now, I'm like, oh, I love how she's doing it. She's doing it like this. She's doing reels. She's showing me the colors. She's showing me it can be done like with customization. And I was just like, you, you're almost like outside of yourself watching yourself as a customer. Yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting. I uh, think me and my husband, we often like, you know, if we go in to buy, I don't know, look at a sofa or something and the person is not like trying to sell us a sofa we always get a bit annoyed Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> because we're both like he used to be in sales I'm I've always been in sales you know like if they don't really try to make an effort like you know we've gone in bef- like for example this is years ago I was trying to buy my car first car right ever and you know it was over here so I didn't have my parents to help me or whatever he's never bought a car before like we didn't know anything and I went literally went into the car dealers and I was like I have a car allowance of x mount every year so I'd like to have a car that I could pay off over three months uh, three years this is the budget like what can I buy (laughs) as how soon can I have it and like most of them would not give me final quote because they were worried that I would go to a different car dealership and try to get a better deal that's so irritating it's really really traumatizing to like actually get them to sell to me that's so funny you're the only person I know I think who's ever said that like I'm irritated by myself (laughs) I'm not selling but when you think about it it's like well yeah you went there with the intention of wanting something so please help me get that thing but it's the same if you walk into a shop and you say, 
oh, can I look at that? Like maybe in a jewellery shop, for example, where things are kind of behind glass and stuff. And like, you know, you almost want the person to go, oh, what el- What are you looking for? What is the occasion? What sort of stuff do you like? Because instead of like, if they just open this cabinet and they give you that one thing, you might go, oh, no, it was not quite what I looked like for. But if they instead try to help you figure out what it what is that you want, you have a much better experience. And actually, one of the things I got from you as well is that selling is literally that. It's trying to help the other person. So if I'm talking to a stockist, like, I'd like to know, like, when are you looking for Valentine's Day? When are you looking for this? So that I can help you. What kind of cards do your customers like? So I can help you find the stuff within my thing that may or may not work. But I think once exactly. I it from that perspective, it became a lot easier because I'm, like, I'm providing a service almost. Yeah. It's just good customer service. It's all there it is. That feels really but, threatening, doesn't it? Just doing good customer yeah. service. The concept that doesn't feel in, like intimidating at all. That just feels quite nice. No, it is just a kind, nice thing to do. <laughs> We're just doing God's work, guys. Just doing God's work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so... Where can people find you and buy your cards? If you would like to make someone's day, I say I've got this energy now, make someone smile and laugh and just, you should definitely check out our cards. Uh, it is www.cheekyzebra.com or you can find us on Instagram, which is cheekyzebra.com, but it's spelled out. So D-O-T-C-O-M. Brilliant. And that is all in the show notes as well, whether you are listening on Apple Podcast or wherever you are listening or watching it on YouTube. And if you want to work with me, I have courses, which is all on my website and linked in the show notes as well. Or if you want to work one-to-one, then that would be from next year now. And you can apply via my website. I feel Brilliant. Like it's been great. I feel a bit emotional. I feel like, like oh, it's over. I'm not quite sure how to end this. <laughs> you said, like, we'll do a follow up, won't we, in six months' time to see, like, how it's gone, which would be really interesting, I think, just to see, like, you know, when we put my action to it, what actually happens. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It will be really good. And until then, let us know if you want to have a QA. Let us know what your feedback is of this series. Please share it if you can over on Instagram. And please, someone comment on a YouTube video. It doesn't even matter what you say at this point. Just say something. You can say an emoji. I don't care. I will do a dance for sure. I love that Thank- action. Make Therese dance and give her an emoji. <laughs> Well, <laughs> we're on that note. Thank you very much. And I hope you have a lovely day, whatever you're doing.